is good youtube it's your boy geek samurai coming to you back with another video man in this video there's new and exciting news that just came upon us and i want to bring it to y'all first thing in this video so Walt disney mcu they're coming out with a new app called the disney plus app which should have like a ton of new features new movies new tv shows and i'm going to bring y'all and read y'all the latest news all about it when it's going to drop how much it's going to cost how much you could pay annually for it, you know, it's going down. Okay, so I'm reporting this from CBR.com. And this is the first scoop about what Disney has released on the new streaming service called Disney+. Plus. It says, while the launch of Disney+, Plus, the Walt Disney's company own premium streaming service for its family-friendly content is mere months away. The company have been able to keep it tight lit on its details surrounding the original program being produced for the digital platform until officially unveiling much of the first year of programming at a recent investors meeting. Disney Plus will launch on November 12th for $6.99 a month with the option for a full year subscription of $69.99. Several films and series have been announced to be available right at launch, while others have been confirmed for the first or second year of Disney Plus's launch. With that in mind, here are all the major Disney Plus exclusive programming that has been announced, along with the details that have been made public about each. So we're going to get a live action. This is a remake. This is the first one that's coming out, which is the Lady and the Champ. That should be dropping on Disney Plus. That means that the latest, the latest in Disney's successful wave of live action remakes of its classic animated films, the studio announced it is remaking the 1955 animated film The Lady and the Champ in February 2018 just as with the original film. So you're gonna get the original film and the live action. The remake follows is a titular pair of dogs that go on a series of misadventures around the city and fall in love. The remake stars Tessa Thompson and Justin Thoreau. Oh, that's a good cast, bruh. Janelle Monet, Ashley Jensen, Benedict Wong, voicing other dogs. Live action actors include Nicole Yvette Brown, Kirstie Clemens, and Thomas Mann. The film is directed by Charlie Bean and was rap and they have wrapped principal photography at the end of the year. That's when it's gonna finish wrapping uh principal photography. Yo, that's pretty dope. That's a good solid cast, man. All right, the next live action is a remake of the animated film called The Sword in the Stone. And it has been greenlit by Disney in 2015. Um, let's see, let's see what they're talking about. This is a loose adaptation of T.H. White's The Once and Future King, the 1963 animated film retold the origin of King Arthur and a young boy who, meet, who met the wizard Merlin while drawing the legendary sword from the stone as part of the prophecy to one day become King of England. Now, I love Sword in the Stone. That's one of my Disney films of all time. So if they're doing a remake, man, they better cast this good, man. At least it's greenlit. We don't know who's going to be starring it yet, but... Disney Plus look like they're doing big things with these remakes. Dumbo was an epic failure this year. Ain't nobody go see that movie. I'm hoping Aladdin does well. And I'm hoping Lion King. Because Lion King trailer was dope. So these remakes, they're like hit or miss so far. Cinderella was good. Beauty and the Beast was eh. You know, Maleficent with Angelina Jolie. I think she was the lead role. That was all right. We'll see how they do. They're doing the, uh, Maleficent 2. We'll see how that goes. Maybe that's coming out. At the end of 2019, maybe early 2020. I don't know. But these remakes, man, they, they make their money. Because people love the originals. They love the animated original film. So for them to take that adaptation and make it into a live action, they're hit or miss, but they still make money. Okay, here's the third live action film, which is another one of my favorites in my top five is Peter Pan. The third live action remake of a classic Disney film is announced for the upcoming premium streaming service. Peter Pan was originally announced as a possible theatrical release before being repurposed for Disney Plus this past July. A loose adaptation of J.M. Barry's children book of the same name. The 1953 animated film saw as the titular character whisk away three Inca siblings in his fantasy home of Neverland. The island getaway saw kids that never grew old, a fearsome crocodile, and a crew of pirates led by a villainous Captain Hook. Okay, so that looks good, too. Disney Plus, man, let me tell you, that might come out either the first year of the streaming service or maybe the next year. They're just giving us what's to come in the near future. 
So that's getting everybody hyped up for the actual streaming service. Because they're in competition right now with Netflix. They're in competition with Apple's coming out with the streaming service too. Apple Plus. Like, I can't keep up, man. Hulu Hulu got one. Amazon Video got one. Like, this is why nobody has buys cable. I just canceled my cable service. I ain't paying for it. Because if we getting all this extra content, why do you need regular cable? It, it don't make no sense. And Disney Plus is supposed to have an ESPN Plus. So you can watch ESPN all day and you already know I'm there day one. I'm all about my sports. Okay, let's jump right into the next news. The next news is Honey, I Shrunk the Kid. They're doing another, either this is a reboot or it's a remake. For the Parent Tramp, Honey, I Shrunk the Kid, Father and the Father of the Bride, they're doing another one. And they're going to do a third chapter or a third film for Sister Act. So there's Sister Act, Sister Act 2, now they're going to do a Sister Act 3. It doesn't say when it's going to drop, but they green light these future movies in February of 2018. So as soon as the app launches, these movies are already going to be in development. These movies are already going to be filmed and directed. They're going to have a cast. We're going to get later news about that in the near future. I can't believe they're doing another sister act. Like This is news to me. Like, Are you serious? Are they going to bring Whoopi Goldberg back? Is she going to pass the mantle of being a nun to somebody else? Like That would be dope. If they do a third one, you got to like, I don't know, you got to send off her character like, she retires or something, and she gives it the, the mantle of being a nun to somebody else. And they go on and, and teach another choir group or something. Because Sister Act 2 is my all-time favorite. The first one, eh, I don't really remember it. But Sister Act 2 was so dope. I still watch that. Lauren Hill, that whole crew, I love that movie. Anyway, I'm looking forward to Sister Act 3. And they're going to come out with Honey, I Shrunk the Kid. This is a 1989 sci-fi comedy. And they said that the remake should be starting hopefully by the end of this year or maybe 2020. That's new and exciting news, man. No, I haven't seen Honey, I Shrunk the Kid in a minute. I think they did three movies. But the second one was my favorite that I remember. When the kids got shrunk, he had to tell his wife. And they get lost in the back of the, <laughs> back of the house on the lawn. They get stuck somewhere and they have to go from the end of the, the yard all the way back to the house. Get back into the machine and, and grow big again. That's all I remember. And one of the kids had a pet ant. So it'll be good to see with the technology that we have today. It'll be good to see a live action Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Because the technology back then, they didn't look that good. But that was the movies of the time. You know, you just had to go with it. But now we have so much like they're doing Lion King. The, the animals look so realistic how they talk. It's amazing what technology can do today. So if they can shrink these kids again. I'm with it, man. Disney can do no wrong. Keep it going. All right. Let's get into the next news. So what Disney wants to do next is the movie that just came out, Captain Marvel, which came out, I believe, March 8th. They said that as soon as Disney Plus launches, this is the first movie that's going to be available on the launch with all their old previous movies. And anything else in the MCU that happens. So you're going to get Captain Marvel as soon as the app launches on November 12th. Which is a good thing because Captain Marvel made over a billion dollars. More than Wonder Woman. I fell asleep on Wonder Woman, by the way. Uh, my wife was up watching that. I didn't watch it. I couldn't I couldn't stay awake. That movie was boring. But Captain Marvel was lit from start to finish, man. I'm telling you, that movie was so good. Brie Larson, she got an Oscar for doing Room. And she was in Kong Skull Island. And she did another movie, Scott Pilgrim. So for her to be cast as Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, I'm telling you, Kevin Foggy and all them boys in the MCU, they know what they're doing when they cast these actors and actresses. This movie was fantastic. So if it's going to be on a streaming service, I'm with it. That is a fact. All right, let's see. Let's get into the news about Captain Marvel. There's been a lot of questions about Disney Plus streaming service and it released some movies on that platform. Disney just revealed some great news for fans of Captain Marvel. According to Disney on Twitter, Captain Marvel will be on a Disney Plus the day that the new streaming service launches. Didn't I just say that? See, I know my information, bruh. This will be the first Marvel movie to bypass Netflix completely. Because I think what Disney Plus is going to do, they're taking all the Disney movies off of Netflix. And you can only find it on Disney Plus. So you guys enjoy Netflix right now that have all those Disney properties. Because Disney's going to go into the vault 
or they're going to go to Netflix and come up with a deal, sign away, and they're going to take all their properties off of Netflix. So you won't be able to watch anything on Netflix that's Disney related. Everything's going to be on Disney Plus. And for $6.99, you can't beat that. Netflix just went up. I think it was $15.99. I think it's going to go up to $20 a month for Netflix. Who paying for that? Disney Plus, $6.99. You could pay $69.99 for the whole year. Yo, Disney is going to be making bank. So you're just going to be sitting on a pile of money, man. Netflix, Apple, Hulu, they ain't going to be able to compete with Disney. I'm telling you. November 12th is going to be lit. All right, let's see what they're saying. So according to Disney Plus, this will be the first Marvel movie to bypass Netflix. Netflix is losing all the Disney properties, man. It's crazy, which makes sense. Because if Disney comes out with the movie in the theaters, they should release it on their own content, on their own streaming service. It makes a whole lot of sense. It says, while Marvel and Disney removing all their content from Netflix, I just said that too. See, I'm not lying. I'm not misleading y'all. Come on, squad. I got you covered. While Marvel and Disney removing all their content from Netflix and promising that all future movies will find their home on Disney Plus from here on out. That means Ant-Man and the Watch was the latest Marvel movie that streamed on Netflix. Iron Man, Iron Man 3, and Thor The Dark World. And I believe Thor Ragnarok as well. That's on Netflix. That's coming off. All these movies going to be gone, bro. Straight as like Avengers Infinity Wars on Netflix. That's going to be gone. Avengers Endgame is about to come out this month, maybe two weeks from now. As soon as that movie's finished making its theatrical run and it's no longer in theaters, it's not going to Netflix. It's going straight to Disney+. Plus. These are the kind of movies that you love so much that's going to make money that you want to see over and over at home. You can only get it on Disney+. Plus. Disney also revealed that the service, the service movies and shows will allow downloading to subscribers can watch everything. Even without an internet connection. Netflix offers... That is dope. Hold up. Pause. So you don't have to have Wi-Fi. You don't have to have an Ethernet cord or anything connecting to your device. You could just watch it anytime you want. You could download it from the actual app itself. And it could be on either on the app or on your device. And then you could watch it without Wi-Fi. That's dope. Because sometimes people don't have Wi-Fi. Or sometimes you're in a place where the Wi-Fi is poor. You could still watch whatever you want to watch on the go or at home. Without any internet connection. That is fantastic. Oh, man, Disney can do no wrong right now, man. Warner Brothers, you better step your game up. Because Disney's coming for your title. That's crazy. Okay, so. Disney also revealed that service movies and shows will allow downloading to subscribers to watch everything. Even without internet connection. Netflix offers this on certain titles. But Disney Plus has promised it to all their titles. That is crazy. This means the day that Disney Plus launches, Marvel fans can download Captain Marvel to the device of their choosing and watch it anywhere through the new streaming service. Captain Marvel will also be available to watch in both standard HD and 4K throughout the service. That's another thing Netflix has going for them. Netflix is doing so well because they stream their TV shows and movies in 4K. You could watch that on any smart TV. But now Disney Plus, you could even download it from the app itself and still watch it in 4K. That is dope. So that's 1080p or any other higher resolution in 4K, Ultra HD. You could watch that for free on your device because you already paid for the subscription. That is yours at your fingertips. Disney, man, come on, bro. Like, I don't even think they need to leak any other news. This is just fantastic. Okay, in some other news, let's just get right into it. So we have... A TV show coming to Disney Plus called Falcon and Winter Soldier. It looked like they're going to have like a buddy cop type of relationship. Where they're going to, you know, they didn't really have big roles in like Civil War or Infinity War. I'm pretty sure they're not going to have that much of a big role in Endgame. Because if you remember at the end of Infinity War, they got dusted by Thanos. That purple chin loving ass. So when he, I guess when the Avengers fight him again, they're going to try and go back in the past, in Endgame. I'm just giving speculation. This is not a spoiler. I don't know what's going to happen in Endgame, but I'm excited to see that movie. But I think that what they're going to do is they're going to try and revive all their loved ones back. But according to this TV show, what they're going to do is that Falcon and Winter Soldier, they're going to have like a, a buddy cop type of relationship where they come together as a pair and they probably fight you know, local villains or whatever in whatever city that they are in. And this probably all happens before Infinity War. This probably happens like right after Civil War where Captain America and Iron Man split off and you have two teams going opposite direction. 
Well, Falcon and Winter Soldier, they stayed with Captain America. So you could have a TV show, maybe one or two seasons, just about their adventures and what, what they explore, who they fight, who they defeat. You know, do they get along? Do they argue? Do they do they joke with each other? So this would be interesting. Let's get into the news. Okay, during today's Walt Disney Company Investor Day presentation, Marvel Studios officially confirmed that Falcon and Winter Soldier will be heading to Disney Plus with Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan reprising their cinematic roles. So these are the same ca characters from the MCU Marvel Cinematic Universe. They're going from the big screen to the silver screen. So it, it, you're seeing that more and more with all these big name actors and actresses. They're leaving the, the movie theaters and they're going to TV. Like, like, for instance, Captain Marvel, Brie Larson, she just did Captain Marvel. Now she has a movie on Netflix called Unicorn Store. I just saw that yesterday, by the way. It was very good. Samuel Jackson's in it, too, and it's hilarious. Hilarious. So you don't always have to make money or be known and famous on those theatrical movies. You can go right to the TV and make a name for yourself. Come out with like an eight-episode season or a ten-episode season, and you can have... Season two renewed, season three renewed. You could go at the 10 seasons if you want. So this is very good that Marvel is actually, or DC or Disney, they want to keep these actual characters in their same roles, but on the television instead of in the theater. That's pretty dope. In a presentation with numerous details about Disney's upcoming streaming service were revealed. Disney announced that the series will be released sometime in the first year of the streaming service, which itself launches on November 12th in all likelihood. And that means that the series will most likely premiere sometime in 2020. Okay, so that is great exciting news, man, because I like Civil War because they actually had a couple scenes where Winter Soldier and Falcon were actually interacting with each other, and they were funny. I mean, seeing that movie in the theaters, you could hear the crowd laughing at their jokes. So this TV show might be interesting. I'm pretty sure it's probably, I'm assuming, it's probably going to be an eight-episode season. Because if you have like a 10, 13, 15 episode season, 20, 26 episode, it draws out the, the TV show. It's too long. You want to hit that, that TV show right on the head. You want to get it where it's good. So eight episodes will be perfect for a first season. So that's interesting, exciting news. And in the last news that I have gathered, Disney Plus is also coming out with a Scarlet Witch and Vision series. This is confirmed for Disney Plus. The Scarlet Witch and Vision are coming to a streaming service near you. While revealing several details about the upcoming Disney Plus at an annual investors conference, Disney confirmed that a live action series starring Scarlett Johansson and The Vision will premiere on the streaming service. This series titled WandaVision. That makes sense because Wanda Romanoff is her name and you have Vision. So this makes a whole lot of sense. They will both star Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany in their regular MCU roles. They're fantastic together, by the way. If they're going to do this TV show, I hope they stick to the comic books, man. I hope they do House of M with Scarlet Witch, man. But we shall see because here's the thing. With the House of M, it involves the X-Men, the uncanny X-Men. And with that, Disney and Fox just came out with this merger deal so that Fox was going to... Disney owns Fox now, so that means they, own, they finally own all of X-Men. But it's still going to take a while before we actually see the X-Men in these movies, whether it's the MCU, whether it's on Disney+. Plus. So I don't know if they're going to go with House of M, but I'm pretty sure they're going to stick to the source material, the comic books, and have, you know, Vision and Wanda become a family. They have kids, and, and it's like the Wonder Twins or something like that. They have, they have twins, and these twins are so powerful. Like, even Wanda and Vision can't stop them. That's in the comic book. So they could go both ways. They could do the House of M or they could do their own family and have their own spinoff far away from the MCU. Either way, I'm still dear day one because let me tell you, Scarlet Witch, she's the most powerful X-Men that I know because I have the comic book House of M. And that is a classic graphic novel. And she, she takes it upon herself to destroy all the X-Men. Her alone. It is crazy. She's like on that next level with Jean Grey. Well, not not. I wouldn't say the Phoenix. She's not. She's not rising from no arrow, no ashes like the Phoenix. But she has the same power level because they're both telepath. They both got the psychic psychic powers. And let me tell you, her powers are on another level. You can see it in Civil War. You can see it when she's in Infinity War before Thanos dusted her. I'm telling you, bro. 
Wanda and Vision would be good because in Civil War, they were pretty good together when they were in the kitchen and it looked like Vision is teaching Wanda how to cook or whatever. That was dope. I loved it. So, all right, guys, I just wanted to bring y'all that news. Uh, I didn't want to give y'all too much because Disney's still coming out every week with new news about what their streaming service is going to include, what how much it costs, you know what I mean? We're, just, we're still getting more information about what is going to be entitled. Are they going to include comic books? Where you can like subscribe to this, the comic book and get any new release that drops within that app. We don't know. Right now, we just know what movies and what TV shows they're going to have. You know, Star Wars, they're, they're coming out with The Mandalorian. That's going to be on the Disney Plus app as well. So if you if you are sweaty for Star Wars, I'm telling you right now. Episode 9 is coming out in December. We already know that. The trailer dropped this week. And we're going to get a, a TV show. Jon Favreau is probably doing that. And let me tell you, John Farrell can't do no wrong because he did the Jungle Book and he's doing Lion King. So if he's doing the Mandalorian, I'm there. He's going to make those animals look realistic just like he did in Jungle Book and Lion King. And let me tell you, he is a good director because he did the first Iron Man as well. That's what kicked off this whole MCU. Now everybody goes Google Gaga for Marvel, everything. John Farrell is the one that started that off with Robert Downey Jr. playing Iron Man. And Gwyneth Pal Paltrow playing Pepper Potts. So, John Favreau, you're like the MVP of the Marvel Universe right now. And if he's going to Star Wars, I'm already there. You could just take all my money, man. My 10s, my 20s, my, my 50s, my, my 100s, I don't care. Anyway, guys, I want to know what you guys think. Leave your comments in the comment section and let me know what you guys think about the Disney+. Plus. Are they hitting the nail on the head for their price that they're giving? $6.99 a month? Like, you're getting so much content. So much. You don't even have to go to the movie theaters no more. Just wait for it to come out on Disney+. Plus. Save your money. That's a fact. Or you could just pay $70 for the whole year. You won't ever have to worry about renewing anything. Straight up. And it's going to be in 4K. All you got to do is just hit that app on the TV, click, and watch whatever you want. And they actually show the layout and the platform of the, of the Disney+. Plus. They show what it looks like. It looks just like Netflix. How you could scroll through the movies. You could scroll through the TV shows. Up and down. Go to the search bar. Type in what you want. Everything looks so smooth. And that's what you want as the viewer. We want everything to be at our fingertips. Quick, fast, easy to get to. Click and just watch. All right, guys. Thank you for sharing with me. Thank you for stopping by. Like, subscribe, share Geek Samurai. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>